So I made some pauldrons for my sewn armor project and they work so well. But they do mean that the hooded dress I've been planning to wear with this is now totally not going to work. So I need to make a new hood. <laughs> Hello lovely people, it's Icy. That's right, I have to work out a completely different way to make a hood to go with this dress. This dress, this outfit, this series of costume pieces. Uh, the previous dune dress is definitely not working uh, because this cuts in quite tight here. A standard kind of wide hood that you see in pictures of fantasy characters is not going to actually work, which I completely did not think about when I started this project. Whatever, it's fine, it's fine, it's, it's fine. Actually, it is fine because I did a little bit of research and have found a different style specifically of a medieval hood, which I think will work. I'm going to put a picture here. So that's a short medieval hood. So a medieval hood is pretty much just like a tube with like buttons down through the neckline. Um, it's not a lot more complicated than that, and it has the advantage that it sits quite close to the neck, which means it should sit sort of inside the design of the pauldrons. Uh, the picture you saw is actually the thumbnail from a video by Morgan Donner, who is a well-known cost costumer, historical sewer YouTuber. Um, there is a link to the video where she makes one of these hoods in the description. Um, so I'm kind of going roughly off those instructions uh, and we'll go from there. I will say mine is not going to be historically accurate at all in that I am going to be using to make this hood. So, thank you. Take those off before they fall off. Uh, I'm actually going to use this old skirt. So this is um, a skirt from, oh god, uh, this is, it, it, it's at least 10 years old, it could be longer than that. Um, it's a little small, it doesn't, it's not, it's not perfectly flattering, so, and I haven't worn it for probably five years, so I am prepared to sacrifice it. So it's a nice heavy duty ponty fabric, so uh, like a heavy duty um, one way stretch, very thick, it's probably at least at least a millimeter thick, uh, flat black on the inside and kind of mild gray on the outside which should work quite well because the the color theme for this is basically black and silver or gray so um, so the plan is to I should have enough material I think uh, I'm going to use kind of you know like folded in half cut a hood out of this if I do this is going to be very flattering. Check this out. If I do this, <laughs> excuse, excuse the tag, Ooh, and then uh, sort of grab the back and tidy that up, you'll see it's actually kind of got the right look already. It sits quite close to the head. The pauldrons will go here. So I think. I think I think that should work. So this will be the plan. Now the second part of this, so I'm going to include this in here, is I'm going to have the bottom of the hood with like a scooped neck. So it's going to cover kind of this part of the chest. But I'm then going to take the aforementioned plastic table mats and I'm going to arrange those so they I've actually got like a, a chess piece that kind of goes around now I think I should be able to coat these um, with like some sort of silver paint to actually make it look more armor like that's the plan 
Um, because I was able to go back and find a couple of extras, they restocked, so I have now four of these $1.50 placemats to play with. Um, so that's quite good. So I have actually cut one open already to have a go to see how it looks. So if I do, for example, this, I'm just going to bring that around like that. As you can see, that's, that's, that's pretty good. It's not bad at all. Um, and if I add the pauldrons onto that, it's actually really, really effective. Uh, so I think the plan for this is to make the hood, and then I'm going to make this separately, but I think I'm going to make it so the shoulder pads attach to this. Maybe permanently, maybe just like uh, this is their main sort of connection route. But as you can see, the contrast between the, the, even just the black plastic, because it's quite shiny against everything else being very matte, is quite quite uh, quite a strong look. So, um, so the idea would be the bottom of the hood is just going to pretty much match this kind of this line. Um, and uh, yeah, 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 we'll see, we'll see how we go. Uh, I, don't know. I don't know how this is going to work. But it does feel like, I don't know how this is going to work, uh, is much the same thing I say every time I start one of these projects, and most of them turned out okay. We'll see what happens. Anyway, let's draw up a pattern. So before we actually do the pattern, let's actually do some design work and work out the measurements, shall we? So uh, we need to get a few measurements here. So the first measurement is actually the circumference around your head. So starting at the top of your head and working all the way around, all the way back again to the midpoint. You probably want to add a centimeter or two um, so that it's going to be comfortable. So we're going to call this measurement A. So A for me is 68 centimeters. So that's with an additional three centimeters worth of ease. Then the second measurement we want is around the head. So we're going to call that B and B is the crown. And for me, B with another sort of centimeter, three centimeters worth of ease is 60 centimeters. So the next measurement we want is around the neck. So plus, once again, an inch or so, uh, three centimeters worth of ease. So for me, the neck plus three centimeters is 38 centimeters. And then we come down and make the shoulders. Uh, so the next measurement we want is from the top of the head down in along the neck to the point at where you want the shoulder, basically the end of the hood to finish. So for me, that's, we'll call that D, and D for me is 44 centimeters. So uh, that is giving us the initial measurements, but a few others. So we also, if we can, want this measurement here along the bottom of the actual sort of the half measurement along the bottom of the actual uh, sort of design here. And we're going to call that E. And what I've done for that is I've measured across the bottom of uh, the, the placemat to give me an idea of what I want that for. So, um, so we're gonna call that 63 centimeters. And then the final measurement we want is actually this measurement from here to here because we'll need to cut this open and insert some extra fabric in here and we'll call that one F. And so for me, that's about 17 centimeters. So once we have all of our measurements, then we can actually draw up roughly the design of the hood. Now, the rough design of this kind of medieval hood is a top. Uh, it's a back of the neck. 
and then we come out. Uh, I'm just going to dot this here because I'm going to change the design for this one a little bit. We come in under the chin and then down the front. Now, I because I am going with a whole bunch of kind of ideas of there's bunches of circles in this design, what I'm going to do is actually continue this hood as well and just sort of give it a slightly more circular front. But this dashed line here is, is where most of the measurements will actually come to. So we have this uh, line here is going to be half B. So I'm actually going to come over here and we're going to write all these down as well. So B is going to be 30 centimeters. A, little a is going to be 34. Little c is going to be 19. Uh, and that's all we need for those ones for the moment. So this dimension here is, is b basically. So this is the crown um, divided in half because of course we're going from here and then back again. So we're just going to say this. So this will be half. So when it wraps around your head, it should be the whole bit. I'm going to add a little bit extra here for the kind of curve at the front. I'm not sure how much I need yet, and it might just depend on how much material I have. So I'm just going to leave that for the moment until I work out what's going on. Now, over here, so the neck, this is C. This is small C. So half the full neck width will be this dimension here. Uh, then we have the, what have we got here? This dimension, basically from the back of the neck to the top. So here, this is A. So pretty much, you know, from your shoulder up over the head and back again um, is sort of around your face dimension. Uh, and then we have uh, the full height of the hood. So from here to here. This is D. So this is the full height. So we're not cutting this in half at all. This is from the crown of the head all the way down along the, uh, along the shoulder to the bottom. So that comes all the way down to here. Now, because this is not going to create enough of a circle with the material we have here, probably going to need a, a this is where we need to put a cut and then basically slot in uh, a gorget. So a triangle of additional fabric. And so this dimension here, this is the 17 centimeters across the top of the shoulder. And the, what are we missing here? The only other one we've got here is this dimension across the bottom. So this is not yet E because we need to take into account the additional triangle of material that we're going to slot in here. So where this is F up to here. So E is actually, we have an E1 for this segment an E2 for this segment and an E3, E3 for this segment here. So all together they are going to equal this sort of this dimension across the bottom of the actual um, across the bottom of the hood. So and then we have um, the tail. Uh, am I going to put the tail on? I don't know yet if I'm going to put the tail on. Uh, I'm not trying to make this particularly you know, authentic or medieval uh, because it's made out of stretch material. <laughs> but um, I will maybe just add a, like a tail, a short tail perhaps, and then I will decide if I'm going to add a full tail. If not, then I can just chop it off and finish the hood instead. So, um, so that's the plan with the measurements so from this now I need to actually turn into like a full-sized pattern uh, the most the trickiest bit I think where it's going to take a little while to work out is actually going to be this gore section um, so I think the plan first will just be to draw this up on paper uh, cut it out and then just try on the paper piece again uh, I'll, then I'll slip the neck and then I'll work out how much extra I need. So, uh, but yeah, that's uh, on to pattern making. Okay, I'm back uh, with a temporary pattern. 
I have also realized my external microphone isn't working for the camera and that's because the USB port is stopped. So I had been wondering why the sound seemed inconsistent before and that's and that's why. So we're just going to go with me speaking loudly and hope for the best. All right. So I have cut out a paper pattern. It's a little rustly. And it's a little big, but I will show you. I believe last time I made a pattern, I discussed something along the lines of, I shouldn't use this really curly, cheap paper from Ikea because it has issues. And here am I saying that again. Let's try that again. I feel, I feel like I'm in primary school and we're making costumes for a play out of paper right now. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so, I mean, it looks, okay. The, this dimension, so around the side of the head to the front seems fine. Uh, but as you can see, the neck, the natural neckline is here. And that actually feels like it might be okay. It feels a little, it does feel a little tight. But this dimension could take, I mean like, like I could take five centimeters out of that easily. So I think, I think that's the plan actually is to, I'm just going to fold off the top, take that down again. I'm actually going to measure this neck dimension because it might not <laughs> you know what? I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the paper pattern is cutting it. I might need to find some scrap material and actually do uh, a fabric template. I thought I could get away um, with just making a template out of uh, out of paper, but 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 maybe not. So. <laughs> I'll have a look in the stash and see if I can find um, something that might be appropriate. The disadvantage is I can't like do what I did for the previous um, the previous project where I made the lining out of like the scraps and if if that wasn't going to work it was fine I could trash that because this will have no lining it will be a single um, single piece of fabric. Wow, it, it's like double layered. So it's like gray on one side and black on the other, which is perfect. And therefore I don't need to line it. Um, but yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, let's try. The fit it, it is slightly better. Um, the look, the stunning, stunning darling. Um, I thought I would add the collar thing back on to see how that kind of worked as like an anchoring, uh, which at least it stops it from curling. Uh, the one, so one thing, okay. So something I've noticed is, um, okay. So the neck is too small. Uh, I, I do need to add, I've only just made it big enough, so even if it's stretched, it'll be like quite close fitting. So I should probably add another like two centimeters basically to the neck, because that's that's definitely not going to work. Um, and I, I think I need to add some level of like a scoop in at the back of the head as well, because there's obviously there's tape at the back here, um, but when I try to kind of put the hood on in a natural sort of way, that all like releases itself um mainly it does feel like most of the extra volume i need is is actually at the front 
Um, but yeah, I, I think I will scoop it in more at the back, so create more of a like a modern style um, kind of hood slash neck. I think I think will be better as well. Um, the other thing I noticed is is when this is not folded out, this kind of curve up section I've got at the front completely doesn't work. It actually needs to be a quite aggressive right angle, I think, all the way down the front. So really, I think I, I almost need to draw an entirely new pattern. Um, I really do not want to waste material on making this, uh, but I'm afraid I may, I may need to. Uh, the, the gore sections is, I mean, like it, it's at least cut to the right spot basically. So if you do that, you can see I won't need the triangle sections I'll need to fill in the top are not, are not particularly big. So, I mean, I guess it's, it, it, this didn't take very long to draw up this paper pattern. It, it's useful, I guess. It gives me an idea. Um, so <laughs> we'll see. It'll look much cooler in black and gray. Let me say that right now. It better look cooler. My god, this better look cool when it's done. <laughs> anyway. Hi. Well, so stylish. So <laughs> very stylish. I have been neglecting all of the sewing for like the last week. I'm not even sure when I did the initial like pattern last week, probably. Anyway, I'll put the dates on the uh, videos. Um, okay, so this is an old pillowcase that I found in the top of a cupboard. Uh, the color has changed. It's weird. Uh, it's a very old pillowcase, so it's definitely not in a state where it could be passed on to anybody to actually be used. So I figured it's perfect for scrap material. Uh, and then I don't feel guilty for, I don't know. Actually, it's a high thread count. High thread count pillowcases make fantastic masks. The inner layer of a mask, brilliant. So if I don't give this to Miss Icy as a costume, uh, I will just chop it up to be inner layers for, uh, for uh, masks. Anyway, it's not bad, actually. The color is not great, but as it's going to be black and gray, I think that's fine. Uh, I did have to actively put lipstick on <laughs> because I was so washed out with this color. It's not, that was not good. So it's pretty good. Uh, I could button it here only just. I might add just another, another centimeter here. Um, I wanted to try this on uh, because it'll be underneath kind of this decoration. Um, so that's pretty good. So I think what I'll do is I'll just like trace around the edge here uh, to give me the, to basically make it pretty much just, maybe just a centimeter past the edge of this. I think that will be a, a neat look. I, I like that idea. The other thing which I'm not sure of is this kind of like to the, to the point look here. I don't know if this is working, but it does look good folded back uh it's it's not it's not bad i think i want to see it in the actual material before i make any firm decisions about this the other option is i can just chop off around here and just bring it down to the neckline in which case what will happen is it'll just kind of I'll just tuck those away it just turns into a sort of a, a fairly slim fitted hood which is which is probably fine actually I don't think that's a huge a huge issue so I just need to add some gauze in on the shoulders uh, and then it's actually fine uh, yeah I made I made a couple of small modifications to the pattern um, the other thing I did was sort of pin it in a bit further at the back of the head just to sort of you know like shape around the back of the head a little better which took out some of the extra kind of weird gathering volume in here so it's not bad uh, I think I'll try it I'll, I'll, I think the first step is to trim down this material 
and to work out the size of the gauze. And then I'll cut it out of something real, i.e. an old skirt. <laughs> but here we go. Not gonna lie, I had my doubts about this one, but it's coming together really, really well. Okay, so that's the hood. I got a, I got a small tail, which I think is sufficient. Um, I still need to chop down kind of the chainmail chest piece <laughs> that goes around the top. Uh, so that's sort of cutting that down. I'm thinking about I need to actually kind of line the inner edge of this thing because it's quite sharp, uh, but I think I can do that. But so let's let's throw those shoulder pads back on. Shoulder pads. Pauldrons. Armored shoulder pads. You know what? It really works. Uh, that's pretty. Lost the shoulder pad. Pretty good. What's the other one? Still have to work out some way of attaching those. And also, just pulling the hood back and having it sit on the back also looks great. Actually, and the extra volume from kind of the the pointed sections around the front of the head, these bits, is fine. I think it's fine. I'm really Super, super happy with this. So one thing I've noticed is where I trimmed it to match doesn't really, I wanted about a centimeter around the outside of uh, the plastic bit. Um, so it's a little uneven that way and it doesn't quite, oh, not sure if you can tell, it doesn't quite sit flat at the back. It has like a little curl up. But if I trim that down to match this thing, that should probably work. So it's nearly done. It looks fantastic. Uh, I'm pleased with how it looks. So uh, the next steps are, yeah, finish off this. I think I'm going to trim the neck. Um, I have a couple of little things I want to try with decorating the plastic to just kind of make it pop a little more. Uh, and yeah, just sort of trim the edge of this, just so it suits flatly around the back. But it looks fantastic and it's nearly done.
and undone. Uh, and I am super pleased with how this pulls together. So the hood is good. Uh, I'm very happy with how it fits, how it's sitting, how it looks on. Probably I'm not really going to wear it long. I like this folded back more. I'm fine with how this kind of comes to a point at the end. That's perfectly okay. Pulled back. It looks great, actually. It looks really uh, kind of fits, which is exactly the look I'm going for, honestly. Uh, the shoulder pads are just using hair clips, hair slides. I don't know, we call them hair clips in Australia. To attach it to this, super practical. That is weirdly actually fantastic. And also I should be able to use the same clips just to like clip it into like some other shirt inside the neckline. So that I'm really, <laughs> really pleased with how that worked. Uh, the silvering on the, uh, the neck piece looks fantastic, actually. I think possibly uh, it might, so this is just cotton bias binding uh, around the sides and the inner of the neck. I think it might need it around the edge We'll see. I might uh, I might put some of that on later. And the little buttons. Uh, the buttons, which can you see? So one here for the hood, and a second one for uh, the chest piece. Uh, they're just like really fancy kind of diamond jewel-like buttons that I bought for some other project, never used. And a little bit of uh, beautiful bright red nail polish has actually made them look like rubies and that ties in beautifully with the black and grey. So more of the costume is done. So I don't know which is the next piece I'm making. I'm actually thinking I'm probably stepping sideways into a separate project as you do. Um, not 100% but I, I do have a project to make a skirt to wear to PAX Australia. Uh, it's going to be reversible though, it'll be like a lovely dark grey check on the outside but it'll be black on the inside so like you can wear it either way, it'll be designed to be worn either way. So that would actually work with this as a costume piece on the black skirt anyway. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how we go. Uh, but anyway, I'm really really happy with how this um, came together uh, it looks great it's eminently wearable you know if you have somewhere that you need to wear armor but I guess what I mean is it's very comfortable and it doesn't feel awkward to be wearing it all so <laughs> but thank you very much for joining me here on YouTube please do subscribe if you haven't uh, there will be more sewing content here uh, please do follow me also over on Instagram and Twitter uh, where I hang out a bit and I would love to see you. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for joining me. I will talk to you next time. Bye.